This is the Schmo with the pro, longtime Eagles franchise setting record holder, Donovan McNabb from Chi Town. How we doing? Oh, outstanding, man. How you doing? We're doing good. Mount Carmel High School. Then you went to Syracuse. You played basketball and football. Then you got drafted by the Eagles. Set in records. What you five NFC championship games, four straight, man? That's the way to go. I mean, you know, it's about winning. Uh, we put things together, was able to put five appearances in the uh, NFC Championship, one Super Bowl appearance, six-time Pro Bowler, put up some great numbers, but at the end of it all, it was an excellent time playing in Philadelphia. Yes, it was. Now, the Schmoes is a Chicago guy, diehard Bears fan. Wish the Bears could have got you. They drafted Cade McNown. You went first. You went before him then. Maybe could have signed with them later on in the career. Mm -hmm. uh, that was the plan. I mean, there was a possible trade that happened when I was in Philadelphia. Didn't go through. And then actually, when I left Minnesota, ended my career, my 13-year career, almost ended up back there again to help them in their playoff run, which they ended up losing, I think, in the NFC Championship. So uh, it, was, it was a great run all around, but it would have been great to go back home so lovey smith did he call you man for an opportunity what was the deal jay cutler too sensitive to have you behind him <laughs> there was a little communication with my agent and obviously the gm at that particular time and then lovey got aboard i got a chance to talk to lovey afterwards uh and he told me about it as well so you know we were that close but uh didn't end up uh, making it happen so you've been an analyst for a long time now after your playing career why are the Eagles fans hating on you, man? You set a lot of records. They're not real nice to you, Donovan. I mean, some people just can't take the truth, and that's what it's all about. You know, when you're in this game, as far as analytical part is concerned, you got to be up front. You got to call it what you see and be able to explain it to the viewers. And I, I think people understand what it was I was saying. Uh, it's just the fact that it was just the Philadelphia Eagles that I talked about. Was it specifically what your comments on Carson Wentz? Well, of course. Uh, it, wasn't, it was never about anything about the team. It's when I mentioned Carson, and, and I think it's just something that has been a communication. It's been the word in Philadelphia that their fans are a little worried about his, uh, his durability. They're worried about if he's going to be able to be healthy all throughout the year and be the Carson that we all expect him to be. Uh, and if he goes down, who's going to be the next guy to step in since Foles is gone? Yeah, Nick Foles, he performed for that team in the playoffs, and that's what it's all about. It's about winning. You think they should have let him go sign over there in Jacksonville? Well, you know, I think there's time for – for everything and I think for Nick he was able to do some great things and you got to remember he was drafted by Philadelphia under Andy Reid had a great year uh, then he battled some injuries and then they decided to kind of rotate with he and Michael Vick and he parted ways with him he came back he was able to put his foot best foot forth and lead him to a Super Bowl win he was Super Bowl MVP the next year very close of getting back to the NFC Championship now I think it's not still let's see what Carson Wentz has to offer second pick of the draft for him they traded up to get him He's a great player when he's healthy, but you know if things don't go as well as they expected, I think the fans will be looking and barking for uh, for Nick Foles. That's how Philly fans do it. You brought him up, Michael Vick. I will say this, man, your professionalism at the position, I think that's so undervalued. He had a lot of controversy. You guys welcomed him in, open arms. Obviously, he took over the helm after you left, but man, what was that dynamic like with you and Mike Vick over your shoulder? You know what is funny? Because uh, Mike and I grew a relationship in his senior year of high school. We recruited him to come to Syracuse to be the board quarterback after I left. Uh, and I hosted him, and, and we just became friends. And when he decided to come out, I, I was the guy he wanted to talk to. I helped him make the decision. Uh, and then once he was going through some, some troubles, I asked Andy if we can bring him on and just kind of groom him to get back into the position. And I thought that he would definitely help our team, which he obviously did when I, when I left and they parted ways with me. Uh, I was happy to see Mike continue on with his career and be able to fulfill his dream of playing the quarterback position in the NFL. Yeah, man, uh, you and Mike Vick, you guys are the poster child of black quarterbacks and the Schmoes lifetime, setting the example for all these different guys. You live right now in Arizona. The Arizona Cardinals drafted Kyler Murray first overall. Not the prototypical quarterback being a little short, maybe 5'10", generous if you call him 5'11". What do you make of him and his potential in the NFL? Great dynamic at the quarterback position. Strong arm, can see the field, makes plays with his arms and legs. I think he's, he's a little bit more cerebral than people give him credit for you got to remember he's a five-star athlete coming out of high school never lost never lost a game one one state championship after state championship went to texas a&m under cliff kingsbury and also kevin sumlin and just didn't work out so he decided to transfer 
played behind Baker Mayfield, who ended up winning the Heisman, stepped in there just like nothing nothing changed, wins the Heisman, takes him to the BCS championship, the semifinals, lose to Alabama, but he put a great performance up, well-deserving of the first pick. I think here in Arizona, they have something dynamic on their hands. When did the relationship in Philly go south between you and T.O.? I know he's been a handful for a lot of guys to deal with. The Schmo's worked with him. I know he's nice with the Schmo. But uh, being his quarterback, man, you guys were so successful together. But when did it really turn south? You know, that's a good question. But you know what? You know, when you when you sit back and look at some of the things that we were able to do, as exciting exciting numbers that we put up in a short period of time. And I thought if we continued it on, it would be more records that we could have broke with a dynamic duo. And I think... Uh, for us, the communication just was lost somewhere in the middle where he felt like he wanted some more credit than he was getting. Uh, he didn't like to see the credit I was getting. I don't know. Uh, but, you know, we both have moved on, and he ended up going on to, to Dallas and Cincinnati and, and some of the other places. Buffalo. That, Buffalo, some of the other places that he decided to go to. Uh, and the relationship with the quarterback just wasn't as good as, I guess, that we had. I don't know. But uh, sometimes zebras always show their stripes. Uh, when they continue on with their career, and we all seen it. So uh, he's a Hall of Famer, well-deserved. I uh, thought he should have probably been a first ballot Hall of Famer, but when you get in, you get in. That's right. Now, who's been the favorite wide receiver or favorite teammate of yours of all time that really stands out? Well, you know, Brian Westbrook is a guy that I think a lot of people kind of overlooked. I don't know if it was mainly because of his size, but he was such a, an explosive player out on the football field. You know, between he and LaDainian Thompson, they were two, and Marshall Falk early in, in the career. Uh, those are three dynamic running backs who can not only do it in the run game, but do it in the passing game as well. And Brian obviously showed in the kicking game as well, you know, being a punt returner, being explosive in that, picking up big yards, and obviously being you know, the one to end up in the end zone. So it helps us with field position on offense. And as a quarterback, you have a security blanket that you can rely on. And he was catching the ball out of the backfield too. He was having the versatility you see out of the modern day running back in today's game. Man, he was doing it early on. Well, I mean, it's not the the 5'11", 230-pound running back. It's a guy that that's a little smaller in stature, thick, but can run the football and pick up big yards and do it in the passing game. Now you're seeing that that dynamic duo uh, from most of these guys that you're seeing in the NFL. And they're all pretty much about 5'10", about 195, 210 pounds. You can catch the ball, end up with about 50 to 65 catches a year uh, with, with about 250, 300 rushes. And that right there is, adds another dimension to any type of passing offense that you have. Who's your favorite quarterback to watch in the NFL today? You know, it's a great question. I mean, everyone presents something different. I mean, you, you see what Aaron Rodgers can bring to the table. You see what Drew Brees, a guy who's kind of in my, my age group, uh, still doing it and doing it very well. Obviously, Tom Brady, the same same thing. Uh, you look at some of the young guys. Jared Goff has put up great numbers in the passing game with Sean McVay in that offense. Uh, how about the Kansas City Chiefs? I mean, with, with Andy Reid, a guy that I know and, and uh, have played under and what he's able to do with, with the quarterback that he has. I mean, this, this guy has done dynamic things uh, behind center, and I think it'll be a great year for him going forward. How about Deshaun Watson in Houston? These are guys that I, I sit back and I watch now that I get a chance finally to kick my feet up and watch the TV and watch them perform. Yeah, what is it about Coach Reed? We all seen that footage of him in the 70s <laughs> throwing that football very far. He's made you look great. He's made Alex Smith look great. He's got Patrick Mahomes. Now, what's the secret recipe to Andy Reid's success? Well, you take a look back at that putt pass and kick. He looked like he was a giant out there yeah. with the putt pass and kick. And is I, he a lot older than those kids? You know, I, I think we really need to see his birth certificate. He looked like he was about 25. I think he had a mustache, uh, hairy legs, hairy back. And he, out there kicking and, and punting at so-called, what, 13, I think it was? 12 or 13, something like that. Yeah, you know, so uh, the thing with him, when he came over to Philadelphia, he had the relationship of working with Brett Favre uh, and being under Mike Cronworm. So he was more of an offensive-minded guy. And when he came to Philadelphia, he was able to cater the offense around my talent. Uh, and then we drafted that way going forward. And so uh, gave me the green light, so to speak, to just go out and play football. Sometimes coaches put you in a little bubble and try to try to mold you into the quarterback that they may have had where they came from or the, the prototypical guy. Andy was a guy that just put the ball in my hands and said, hey, make a play for me, and I know you can do it. Being a basketball player, too, in college, when do you realize that quarterback was your future and not playing ball? 
Well, when I didn't get recruited as heavily as I should have in basketball, you know, don't. But Jim Beheim, he's a Hall of Fame coach. He absolutely is. But, you know, I was recruited more for football with the opportunity to play basketball. And when I perform in practice, I think that gave Jim Beheim that opportunity to say, you know what, this young man is not just a football player, he's an athlete. Uh, put the ball in my hands. Either I'm going to go upstairs on you, I'm going to rain from the outside on you. Who's your favorite player to watch in the NBA today? You know what? It's, it's tough because I'm an old school guy, so I'm a big Michael Jordan fan. Greatest basketball player of all time. Uh, say it one more time. Say it one more time. Greatest basketball player of all time. If you can't tell, he's repping the Jordan brand. That's right, baby. I always stick the tongue out. But if, it, if this class, I think when you look at probably my top five players in this league, I mean, you obviously go LeBron James, Kevin Durant, Giannis, AD, and Steph Curry. Uh, those are guys that I think really changed the game uh, from a standpoint of, seven foot can play from the outside inside you got a 6'9 265 pound guy running the point playing all five positions being more of the athletic magic johnson that can score and then steph curry reigning from from everywhere on the floor and being able to shoot at a high clip but kevin durant really ruined the nba for the schmo in the summer of 2016 uh -oh. it's hard to gauge that he's the greatest player in the nba right now or one of the greatest because he's playing with the best backcourt in nba history steph curry's probably the greatest shooter in nba history he never has to get double teamed mm -hmm. because you got to worry about clay and steph clay could be a first option and maybe 26 27 different teams in this league mm -hmm. i mean andre iguodala is no slouch sean livingston they got to do a story about him man Absolutely. back when he had that knee injury in the mid 2000s with the clippers you never thought the guy could walk again look at how he's playing those guys could start on any team so Durant man he doesn't have to face that same force of competition that a LeBron James and maybe a Giannis Antetokounmpo has to face say that one more time what's his last name Antetokounmpo oh, I love the energy right there but you also got to look into as far as Kevin Durant is concerned they couldn't double him in OKC as well because Russell Westbrook was still there but there's but there's just Westbrook it's not Klay Thompson and Steph Curry well the, the thing about the Golden State and, and it's not so much about the backcourt I think it's just the way that they're so unselfish you know they play where the ball moves there's always energy with the ball so it's not just Steph shooting 30 times a game Steph will get up 25 23 shots a game Kevin Durant he's probably averaging some between 17 and 19 shots same with Clay he's around the 17 18 Draymond Green is more the glue you got a bench would come off with Andre Godala and also Sean Livingston Sean Livingston being an Illinois guy so That's right we got to represent the right same way. with Iguodala uh, well, there you go Springfield Illinois I definitely know about that. But the whole thing about it, really, about the Golden State Warriors is the fact that not only offensive, offensively they're a juggernaut, defensively they are as well. Better than the Bulls? The 96, easy, 97 Bulls? Easy, easy. Not in that class yet. I mean, offensively, yeah, they put up great numbers. But when you got the GOAT and then you ask, you ask a guy like a role player, Scotty Pippen and Dennis Rodman and those guys. And then you obviously got Steve Kerr, who, who's the coach of the Golden State Warriors and knows how to shoot the balls. 73 and 9 don't mean a thing without a ring. And you just mentioned Steve Kerr as the coach learning under Greg Popovich Thank and you. Phil Jackson. Mm -hmm. Who's the better coach between the two all time? Pop? Or Phil. Come on now. We're always going to go Phil Jackson. I mean, the Zen master is always one that's going to relax his team, sit back, blow, blow the whistle, let him play. Didn't look good in New York, though. Did you see what players he was coaching out there? I mean, he made some bad decisions. You know? Starts at the top. Leadership, James Dolan. Well, Michael Jordan's been kind of rough, too, as a, as a uh, owner. So, yeah, he's not able to put things together as far as his draft picks are concerned. But when they're on the court, they're pretty talented. We'll get you out of here on this. For all the haters and lovers out there, what's your one message for them? Donovan McNabb out of Chicago, future Hall of Famer. Come on. Hey, keep your head up. Keep working. Never let anybody tell you what you can't do. Prove them wrong. And it all takes you. Have confidence in yourself. Keep your head high. Believe in yourself and get the job done. That's key. He's the pro. I'm the schmo. We're out. Hey, man. Good stuff, man.